Hey guys, Josh RV Nerd here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And uh, when I first put the following video up, I didn't realize I simply grabbed the wrong file and the wrong information. So the little floor plan photo that appears in that bottom left corner as the video goes on and the handy little specs that'll appear up in that corner, uh, they're wrong. I, I grabbed the wrong ones. Now the dry weight I got correct because I got that off the right trailer. So in an effort to try to, to clear this up for you, here is the correct information. Uh, take a quick minute to pause, review, and enjoy. I think there's going to be a lot of people that look at this floor plan and go 7,785 pounds. Why is that like a thousand pounds heavier than almost anybody else who builds this floor plan? And the short answer is, there's a lot of reasons. This one is not made to be lighter. This is a bigger, heavier duty rig made for uh, more extended use. Like if you're looking for a really high class travel trailer, like maybe you want to be a full timer, but you want more of a couple's camper situation, you prefer something like a heavy half ton for towing versus a hard riding three quarter ton when you're not pulling anything. Well, this is going to be one for you. This is the uh, one of the new Eagle HT travel trailers here. And it is, uh, it's a creature that really kind of stands apart from the pack, I think. And like its cousin, the White Hawk 27RB, like those you might find here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan, this is fully travel accessible. Like you see that when you get in here, they did a great job of really intelligently positioning things like your kitchen drawers so that you can always get to them in transit. You see these three uh, drawers facing us right down here. Some brands will put those on the right hand side of that kitchen countertop and uh, the hiccup with that is if the slides close then you suddenly can't get to any of your drawer space. Well obviously that's not a deficiency this one has. You can get to the bathroom, the kitchen, the seating, all in transit. But you notice that from here you can't get up to the bedroom. Well, no worries, they got a way around that. And it comes in the form of the second entry door right here that goes straight to the bedroom. So this makes this RV always fully accessible, sometimes called turtle friendly in the RV business. If you need to get up here to get to your bedroom storage, you most certainly can. Whether it's this overhead cabinet, the storage under the bed, those side wardrobes, or even the uh, additional sort of uh, dresser and personal storage space that they have here that actually hides really in the corner where the kitchen would otherwise waste space. Despite being a similar layout to some other things you might find on the market, I've yet to find anything that really is quite like this. Um, it's a little trickier to feel some of the differences of an Eagle HT just in a two-dimensional video like this. But the moment you step inside of it into a real-life three-dimensional space, a lot of variances become very clear. Now, obviously the decor here is very, very aggressively modern, um, considering the traditional nature of the RV business. And appropriately enough, it's called the modern farmhouse decor versus the American tradition. They give you two options at Jayco. This is the, uh, you know, white-ish interior with the, uh, you know, gray furniture accents versus American tradition, which is brown and brown and brown and brown. So they really give you... I guess you call it classic neutral and modern neutral <laughs> in an Eagle HT. But starting right from the top, the differences here make themselves apparent. So, uh, begins with the fact that we have a whisper ducted air system, which uh, I think Eagle might have been one of the first travel trailers to even do that. Um, the thing is though, it's mounted inside a seven foot tall ceiling. And that right there is one of those areas where this immediately begins to define itself as a uh, like more of a half ton sized travel trailer with bigger fifth wheel feels really because that's the thing is that this is like a, a part for part widget for widget object match with a big Eagle HT fifth wheel and that's one of the cool things Jayco does with Eagles they don't build the trailers different from the fifth wheels they just build them on one flat deck now like a lot of versions of this floor plan you have that big you know extra wide entry door into the bedroom area to give you that nice big look and feel and it is complemented by the fact that between the white decor the taller ceilings and the maximum size windows not just in the side wall of the slide out but the side of the slide which is a tricky thing to say which is why i put my hand in front of the camera sorry guys 
And you notice they all also open for airflow. And they're all fully trimmed out so that those anchors for the plated shades really have something to bite into. Now, the dinette down here, they did something a little bit different. They actually attached the rear cushions to the exterior sidewall of the slide out. So those cushions along the wall under that window, they don't come off. They're actually screwed in place so that they're never constantly slip sliding out of the way. So, if you want to fold this down into a sleeper, you simply take those pedestals out, drop that sealed edge uh, table down, which, by the way, both the tabletop, the countertop, all the tops in this thing have a sealed edge press membrane on them. Um, and then you take the side cushions to form the rest of your U-Dinette sleeping area. So, And that is like a seven foot long bed when it folds down. An adult can sleep on that. But then they do a neat thing down here underneath that bench and that is that they put these very classic very simple inexpensive little sliding plastic totes in here now that doesn't look or seem very fancy but it doesn't have to be to be very very effective but the thing is a lot of people go yeah but don't you block your cargo in the back and the answer is no you leave the tote pushed all the way to the back because the tote's easy to pull out you put smaller objects in front of it and then you can pull the toad out uh, whenever you're ready. So it's all right here when you need it. But notice this. Even the dinette has those nicer hidden hinge cabinet uh, doors. All of this camper has nicer upgraded hardware like that. Because this thing is not a weight and price sensitive coach. This is a very feature heavy coach. A couple things to look at down here. They actually are putting carpet padding under the carpet in the slides, which is shockingly uncommon. Secondly, they are using a radiant barrier on the slide floors to keep the, if it's, you know, summertime, to keep the AC from bleeding out through the slide floor, or if it's wintertime, to keep the heat from the furnace in here. Now, there's a ton of the storage in this kitchen, but those drawers and this cabinet door right here where your big wastebasket could go, they do occupy the same space when they're open. So I did want to show this open, and then I'll show the doors open, but you see that you can get one of those nice, big waste baskets in there. But the thing is here, guys, at a glance, you look at it, and, I mean, the kitchen cabinetry is extra tall being seven foot. It's six inches taller per cabinet space than most travel trailers, and you will see that they did good drawer space down here. But the thing is, that is not where the kitchen storage starts. In a sense, it really starts right back here, up by the door. Up here we have a couple things. We've got our enclosed command center as well as this handy little USB rechargeable remote control with that touch screen. That can operate things like uh, slides, awnings, lights. Pretty handy. Coat closet right when you walk in the door so that you don't have to go tracking dirt through the whole RV just to put a coat in. But this is where really your, your kitchen space starts and it begins with what I like to call the pantry tainment center. Notice that they don't just have shallow little shelves, but they actually have doors to keep things in those shelves. And I point that out, guys, because if you go looking around a lot of the RV business, you will see an entertainment center set up similar to this that will have these open, pretty shelves. And people don't question that because you're used to looking at houses, and houses have open, pretty shelves without doors on them very frequently because houses don't bounce down the road at 70 mile an hour. Well, obviously... Jayco spend the extra time and money to actually put cabinet doors on here versus just, uh, you know, um, shelves that are open and pretty. Electric space heating fireplace with remote control to, you know, chill your toes. And check this out. You've got a Bluetooth DVD player right here. But you also have this nice open section where they're actually running additional extra HDMI wiring in Jayco RVs with the idea to make expanding your entertainment options easier. So if you do want to hook a Blu-ray player up, you don't have to fish wires through a cabinet. Jayco did it for you. And it's not that you're incapable of doing it, but doing it without making it look hillbilly ugly is sometimes tricky the way that all this stuff is jam-packed together so Jayco makes it a non-issue now the TV swings open as though it were a door itself to reveal some extra storage space behind it which is why I call this a pantry tainment center plus when the TV swings open like this it's real easy to get to the rest of the plugs if you need to plug other stuff in um, now above this we've got a big deep cabinet space which is always welcome but then we get over here into the kitchen proper now you notice the two-tone color package here they've kind of done kitchen light entertainment it's not black it's actually a very dark espresso it's a very dark brown but it works pretty well with the blacks in the camper like if I get right up here brown versus black you can see it but when I back up it kind of blends away doesn't it pretty neat how they did that anyway 
Eight cubic foot fridge freezer with those nice raised panel hardwood inserts, but look at this. Since the RV is extra tall, it left them extra room to put things like extra large drawers in. And buddy, they didn't waste a chance for space in this camper. We've got five big, handy, easily accessible drawers right here in the kitchen proper. Now, under the sink, we've actually got an interesting little, like, phone charger station, which seems like an odd spot for it. But frankly, that's a virtually wasted space in most RVs that now became a function space. Pretty smart. Eagle is smart. Household outlets, where you can actually reach them. And this job right here, I'm going to talk about one outside as well. It's a Bluetooth speaker mount for a specific Furion speaker that I personally feel is a little bit overpriced, but... Um, it's not part of the RV anyway, so I, I, I guess I really don't care. It's up to you if you want to get it or not. But the fact is, it's also a two-plug USB charging hub. Now, I mentioned earlier our countertops are a sealed edge press membrane. So between the sink covers, the tempered glass top, and that big L-shaped peninsula counter, you've actually got great prep space in this rig. And once again, we have power outlets where appliances can actually reach them instead of power outlets that are mounted under overhead cabinets. Speaking of overhead cabinets, I'm going to take a knee so that you can count those lights under those cabinets. One, two, three. They didn't have to do three lights right there. They probably could have put one just in the middle and it would have been enough light. And when most people are RV shopping, they don't have the lights turned on like I have them turned on for you right now. Even before we meet you at Halet RV, we're trying to go above and beyond. But it's easy things to not even understand that we've done for you. That's why I'm pointing this out. Not only are we going further, but so did Eagle. They put more lights in here because lighter is brighter, brighter is bigger, and bigger feels better, doesn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Um, extra large overhead cabinets. Remember, they're six inches taller than the industry standard trailer, which means they can throw a shelf in here that is super functional and adds double the overhead cabinet space. Isn't that just something right there? They are excellent about maximizing your capacities. Now, this has a two-piece sliding door to close that off, but then take a look at these little things. The fact that the sliding bedroom door actually does have a latch so that mom and dad or grandma and grandma or whoever can have some privacy. Now, there are several pieces of optional equipment on this RV, like the fact that uh, we put a bigger air conditioner on it, but the uh, king bed. Actually, at the time of this filming, we are something of a prototype test dealer. I suggested Eagle come up with a, a true 70 by 80 king bed in here. And they said, you know what? We could do that. So we are one of the few dealers that actually have this with a king bed available. Very, very cool special option feature that isn't a common object right now. There is, the bed is easy lift. There is storage below it. But there's a neat thing here. And if you don't mind getting in bed with me, <coughs> I can show you what I mean. Right up next to the headboard, on each side of the bed, there are switches. One for an overhead light, and then one for your reading light. You can kind of see how those have kicked on and off. There are a pair of matching switches over there. So each person, on their own side of the bed, has control of one overhead light and one uh, side accent light. You don't have to say to your partner, hey, wake up, turn off the light. You don't have to roll over. You don't have to disturb anyone. You can control your lighting on your side of the bed. Plus... You also have the dual element blue-white reading lights against the front wall of the RV that I don't even have on and I'm not using currently. So this gives you, once again, lighter, brighter, bigger, better looks and feels. You see how those wardrobe closets are angled inward? I love that just because aesthetically it doesn't look so boxy, but it also draws your eyes inward and makes you realize how big this is. Um, we have also given this a 50 amp service upgrade, which is why you see that junction box up there. Always remember, the one that we have in stock might be different than the one that you're seeing here. It's very possible, actually, especially as more and more time goes on. Uh, but this is typically how we'll try to outfit these things, so that if you are in super sun country, despite the heavy insulation package on Jayco's, which has some of the best, if not the best, proven data out there, um, you know, you can add a second air and be always comfy in sun country. And then, as we saw when the slides uh, were closed and we were here in the bedroom, you've got that extra closet there, or, well, cabinet, as it were, with triple dresser storage below. Should you choose to add a TV to the bedroom, of course, you are well-suited. Speaking of air conditioning, um, here's a good one. Vent right here. Another thing that Jayco's done a little more. You can close and turn, or open and turn, as it were, your vents in Jayco uh, RVs. That's true even in the SLX base series travel trailers that Jayco produces. We've spoken a lot about the kitchen so far, but let's zero in on the entertainment here. 
You see that theater seat? You got, uh, you know, a pair of wall huggers right here kicking your feet up, staring at what I call Boardwalk and Park Place at a No Neck Wrecker Entertainment Center directly across from here, right above that beautiful fireplace. And as we've seen, the TV can pivot out. So if you want to be able to view it more from the dining area, which is where I'm at right here, you're always going to get a good look at this thing. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier is your main cabin lights here and the lights above the dining area actually are on a dimmer switch, which is kind of cool. If you just touch and hold it, you can see how they dim right down and you can swell them right back up. But what's cool is they have positional memory. So if you dim them down at night and then turn them back on in the morning, you're not going to get blinded. We've already seen a ton of storage, but I guess it wasn't all of it because they went, you know what? We got this extra corner here. Why waste that? Why waste the opportunity for another seven foot tall pantry jam packed full of shelves that you can fill full of dry goods? How cool is that? But the bathroom back here is fantastic. So you see we got this porcelain foot flush stool and we've got a nice large shower with an extra large shower pan um, that uh, I was, you know, doing some uh, test ding, uh, I guess you could say standing in it, but hey, being seven foot tall is never going to hit my head in there. And we have good, dedicated linen space here. You know one of the things I like, though? This window in the bathroom. It gives you the ability, like, when I just walk in here, maybe it helps that I'm tall, but when I just walk in, boom, I got a nice view of this thing. But the moment you are a little shorter than me, or the moment that you're sitting on the toilet or anything like that, you maintain full privacy even with the window open in this bathroom, which I thought was pretty darn cool. And you have got excellent shoulder space and elbow room on both sides of that toilet. You're not going to feel like you're, you know, packed into a, a sardine can in this thing. Um, more of that sealed edge press membrane countertop stuff I was telling you, and a lot more of it is the thing. You have a ton of space in here because this is all above a miniature outside kitchenette, very similar to its White Hawk uh, sister cousin thing. Not a sister cousin. That's a that's a that's a bad thing. <laughs> anyway, moving up. Nice little. You have a dedicated mirrored vanity with a backlit morning mirror, but you see that we also have a additional dedicated uh, cabinet over here. Now, a couple neat things I want to point out. Very specialized features you don't find much outside the Eagle Series or Jayco's. This is a different type of fan fixture right here. Basically, guys, rain can't get in it. It doesn't crank up or down. You just turn it on when you need it. And you also have a single blue element LED night light here. So kind of like those reading lights on the, each side of the uh, the bed in the master bedroom right there, you can see what you're doing if you need to get back here in the evening to use the bathroom without having to blind yourself and everybody else. Now, along with that striking sort of uh, pewter-toned exterior, where it's not gray, it's not beige, it's sort of a grayish in between, you've got this really well-defined modern-looking nose cap. And those vertical lightsaber-looking glow beams right down the, uh, the contour of it really look sharp. But there's something else on this nose that really, really stands out to me, and that is this very unique front storage tray that they have up here. They did a little cutaway on the nose caps so that if you want to go nuts adding a ton of batteries for dry camping, if you want a place for extra cargo, if you want a place to put a generator, this travel trailer is equipped to be able to handle all of those things. So things like the taller ceilings, the, uh, the heavier frame construction, double the warranty, mind you, is, is a big factor here. Jayco's carry double the RV warranty of pretty much anybody else anymore. Um, and the ability to have that generator station on front, the uh, drop frame storage with the fifth wheel style docking center. All those things are not normally travel trailer features, but yet here we are. Now, it seems like every manufacturer puts some sort of, if not a promise, an insinuation that this thing could handle polar vortex temperatures out there, you know? Well, the fact is, though, that Jayco has done the most extensive testing on their models, published that data, and does have the best data in the industry at this point on that. Um, and things like that enclosed docking center, their heavier insulation and radiant barrier packages, because those two things are different things, mind you. And I don't know that historically I've done a good job of stressing that, but I want to try to do better for you folks uh, moving forward here. 
like the uh, the window tint to keep the sun out of that thing in the summertime, the roof attic vents, so that when the sun is banging on it, it's not creating a bunch of additional heat. There's a lot of things Jayco has done here to make this a better performing trailer, but there's also things that they've done here to make this a safer performing trailer, and really the best example of that, I think, is the um, Jayco Smart Lighting feature. Now, SMART is an acronym standing for Signals, Markers, and Reverse Travel. And what that means is that just like a semi-tractor trailer, when you flip on your left turn blinker, not just that left tail light, but upper clearance lights and all associated side marker lights will blink with that turn signal so that the other drivers on the road can understand what you're trying to do and then nobody gets hurt. Now this does have a standard, uh, if it's not standard, we've been adding it, but I believe it's standard, uh, factory two inch receiver hitch on the back here. And the reason I like to point that out is because it's a factory installed feature, that means that it's a factory warranted feature. A lot of travel trailers, a lot of RV brands like to boast some kind of three year structural warranty, which some are good, some are not. But many of those also provide you no way to put a simple bike rack on the back of the camper. And in doing so, you could be voiding factory structural warranties, but not on a Jayco. They've made it so that you don't void your warranty. Now, one more thing, actually two things that do one thing, is the uh, above the backup camera prep and in the center of those taillights, there is a, uh, a, a white light spot and big bright white lights. That's the RT, the reverse travel of the smart lighting system, so that when you are backing up in the morning or in the evenings, you can actually see or your spotter can see where you're going. And you can use the little remote control that comes with this RV to pop that power awning out anytime you're out here on your patio space. Or if you're inside and you hear it kind of wobbling around in the breeze, you can use it to close the same thing. Kind of a handy thing to maybe have in your bedroom for such purposes. Um, that remote can do a lot of other things, obviously, but that is one of the nicer, more frequent things you'll use when you're actually set up on your campsite. Once again, very much like its cousin, the Whitehawk 27RB, you do have a, a little mini outdoor kitchenette right here. You've got that screaming hot burning Capitol Grill housed inside that rolled steel galvanized countertop. Inside, though, you see a couple neat little things. You can see a set of household plugs, USB exterior light, some switches. A uh, There's a switch there. One of the lights that I don't have on currently is a blue sort of night light, just like we might have seen inside. And then you can see the thing here, just a little propaganda piece of uh, paper has curled a little bit from a little bit of uh, chill in the air. But that is uh, one of those mounts for a Furion Bluetooth speaker. Those speakers aren't included with the campers, but basically... If, uh, if you look at it, it's just a two-port USB charging hub. And we've got that two cubic foot outside fridge here to keep the bottled waters and barley pop cold and on hand. Yes, sir. Now, we've got the nicer aluminum plank steps, and you can see that there's triple steps on both entry doors. They don't scale down and call one a main door and one an off door. Next to the main entry, well, I just said not a main door, but next to the living room steps, if you will, um, you can see there's low mounted outside speakers, one on each side of the tires, and that'll keep you from blowing away your neighbors. Also, those speakers are installed in the skirt, not the sidewall. So you don't have a big four inch hole drilled through your laminated wall, potentially causing another water penetration point. It's just minimization of risk, and frankly, it's better because the speakers are where you're going to hear them. And we've got a switch here for step lighting outside the RV instead of inside the RV. It's amazing how many RV manufacturers will build a step light, but you have to go inside in the dark to get to the switch to come outside. Eagle doesn't make you do that because Eagle is smarter. Now, uh, we have here uh, best in class Goodyear endurance radials, just like their fifth wheels, because that's the thing. Eagles are ultra consistent. This is a part for part match with their fifth wheels. It's just on a flat deck instead of a gooseneck chassis. And that includes the Moride CRE 3000 rubber shock dampening suspension here, which is the same thing that you see on a lot of luxury fifth wheels. Because this is, you know, a very high-end, high-equipment focused travel trailer. This is certainly not the least expensive travel trailer, the lightest weight travel trailer. It is not made with weight and price sensitivity in mind. This is a feature-focused floor plan and series, guys. You can, if you want, add a TV outside the RV here. Just like if you wanted, you could put a TV in the bedroom. Everybody camps differently. If I put a TV in from the factory, someone tells me it was a waste of money. If I don't put one in from the factory, someone tells me uh, that uh, they, they won't buy it without a TV. No matter what we do, we're wrong. But the fact is, 
This camper has no TV currently, which is typically how we order them. We can go across the street to the big box store of your choice, get a TV that is bigger or the same size and or higher quality than you're going to find from the RV manufacturers and install that for the same or less money than they would do it. So it's really not a, a deal breaker. But even this door has those nicer slam latches, which is pretty slick. Um, again, both entry doors have the same kind of step lighting switch outside where you can get to them. Both entry doors are also a full 30 inches wide and have a full tinted window. Now, you can barely see that light in the bedroom through that tinted window, despite how bright they are inside. But that indicates that is a full window and it does have its own interior privacy shade. It's not just a frosty glass. So if you actually want to be able to see from out of your bedroom, you can. Now this is the first series of Jayco travel trailers mass produced with a drop frame floor plan. That's a normal fifth wheel feature. And you see things like this on things like our Winnebago Mini Pluses. You see things like this on our Rockwood Ultra lights. But Jayco trailers have not historically been made with drop frame storage because this, again, is not a weight sensitive trailer. If you want to go bananas packing this thing full, you've got all the cargo capacity in the world you're going to need in here. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to overload this. You're going to have to throw bags of concrete mix in to do that. But notice, you're not looking at that carpety stuff that can hold moisture and smell like mildew. It's the same rubberized uh, industrial flooring that you see in a, uh, like a toy hauler garage. And if we look up here, and remember that on top of here is actually uh, above this is your bed. It's a fully uh, radiant barriered line uh, or lined uh, pass-through storage, meaning you're not going to lose hot and or cold air, depending on what you're trying to pump into the RV, into your pass-through compartment. It's not a big giant thermal hole in the wall. Now this is something Jayco does on their fifth wheels across the board. But this is something most travel trailers don't do. And that's why Jayco's have one of the very best 0 to 100 degree proven packages out there, guys. Then we've got our handy little cold water sprayer port right here. We've got a full outside shower on the other side. But that's just there for quick little cleanups. Now, um, we got uh, Mr. Jody over here doing some quick quality control checks. Before any RV is actually accepted from the factory, you can actually see the taillights of the delivery driver's truck. We do a surface inspection, then we pull it in the shop, we do a full burn. And before you take it home, we do another set of full burns on all the appliances. And that's all part of the price that you see on our site every single day. We are not a hidden fee dealership. So, uh, with that, let's close that awning up and take a, uh, take a jaunt upstairs. Look at a couple neat little widgets they have up on the roof of this beauty. So at a glance, it looks pretty vanilla up here. You feel like you've seen this all before. But there's a couple key things I want to point out that they're doing. First of which, you can't see. And that's the Magnum Truss roof system that goes into every Jayco rated for minimum 4,200 pounds. Which is at least 1,600 pounds more than anyone else has ever published roof stress data. So it's a uh, best in class roof structure. Part of what's helping us here is not just the thicker roof trusses with the heavier nail plates, but it's the fact that we're actually walking on plywood roof decking, not OSB. Uh, now, up here on the right hand side, we have a roof mount solar prep plug. Now, remember how I said it sounded, this thing looks plain vanilla. Um, by the way, backing up on a roof like this when you're looking one direction is a really dumb idea. I've been doing this for a lot of years. It doesn't mean I'm good at it, it just means I've been lucky so far and haven't fallen and hurt myself. But anyway, what I was getting at, it's a nice big blank canvas. You've got a ton of room if you want to mount either flexible or more uh, you know, rigid solar panels up here. Tons and tons of room to do that. Additionally, I want to draw your attention to just how nearly comically heavy-handed they are with their roof sealants at Jayco RV. And this isn't just the Eagle Series. You could get up on a base series SLX J flight and it's gonna look the same. They just make sure that they have covered every single nook, cranny, gap, and void there possibly, possibly could be. And when I say void, what I mean is this is a one-piece uh, roof membrane, but they had to cut it to put in things like the air conditioner, to put in things like the skylights. There are punctures from the factory level in it that have to be there to put things like your power vent fan in place. Well, they want to make sure that they don't leave a gap behind. And pardon my footprints up here, you can see that it is a bit muddy. One more thing I want to uh, point on here, and then we'll wrap this up, is this is the roof vent fan in the bathroom. And you can kind of see how the vents actually sort of uh, curl down. Well, the idea is that if it's raining, it doesn't crank up or down. You just open those side flues, and 
there you go. You can use this in the rain. You could leave it open for airflow and transit if you want to, but it does have effectively like a, a shutoff flap, I guess, for lack of a prettier phrase, if you will. And there's more to it than we've covered so far, guys. But I think that we've hit on a lot of the major ideas so that you can understand the difference between an Eagle HT and other very similar layouts. Because I've mentioned the Whitehawk a few times, but this layout you can find in Rockwood, in Winnebago, in Apex, uh, I mean, in a ton of brands. This is a very popular floor plan. But this one has gone about it with big RV feels in a, in a smaller RV size than most. You know, they're all cool in different ways. Eagles are not going to be the least expensive, but they are going to be one of the most heavily equipped. So understanding those differences, that's my job here for you. Telling you which one's the best, that's for you to decide based on how you plan to camp. But obviously, as you can see, we've got a lot of different things to offer you here at Halet RV. The one thing we don't offer is hidden dealer fees. We just don't do those things, but we do hitching, pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, and everything in between. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.